Welcome to Electron Online, and what we're going to do here is try to find the moment of inertia of a hollow sphere. So here we have the sphere. It is very thin, it has a very small thickness, delta r. It has a radius r. It's going to be rotating about this vertical axis z. It has a mass m and a density rho. So how do we do that? Well, let's say that we're going to slice it up in very thin little slices. If we do that, we'll end up with a little slice that looks like this. There's a little slice, and of course that will look like a thin little washer. So if we draw that right here, the little washer will look like this. So that's, there we go. So that's kind of what it will look like. The radius of that will be x, so this will be the distance from there to the outside, so the radius will be x. There'll be a small little thickness to that, of course, we have to realize that, so there's a small amount of thickness associated with that little ring, so that it will actually have a tiny amount of volume and a small amount of mass, okay? So what would be the volume of that ring? Well, let's call it dv, and dv would be equal to the circumference times the height times x. So what would be the height of that? Well, the best way to express the height would be to say, let's take this axis from there to there, let's call it r, and let's swing it through a small little angle, let's call the little angle here d theta. Let's call this angle here theta and this angle d theta. So the height of that disk would be r d theta. So it would be the height, r times d theta. The distance from there would be x. And so the volume then would be the circumference, which is 2 pi x times the height, r d theta. And times the thickness, that would be delta r. So we take the circumference times the height, that would be the surface area, times the thickness, delta r, and that would be the volume of that little disk. Now remember that the mass, your dm, would be equal to the density times the volume dv. So in this case, the mass of that small little disk is going to be 2 pi times rho times r times delta r times x times d theta. So that would be the mass of that small little disk. And since it's a disk that's spinning on its axis, all the mass is at the largest distance away from the point of rotation. So we can then say that di, the moment of inertia of that small portion of the total sphere, would be equal to the mass, which is dm, times the distance to the point of rotation squared, which would be x squared. So that would be the moment of inertia of just a little disk. And since dm is equal to this, we can then say that di is equal to dm, which is 2 pi rho times r times delta r times x d theta. Now x times x squared will be x cubed d theta. All right, so now we have the moment of inertia of that small little disk. To find the moment of inertia of the whole sphere, we're going to integrate all the little slices from here to there, or we can do it from the halfway point to the top and simply double it. So what we're going to do is simply integrate over the top half and double it. So that means that i would be equal to 2 times the integral of di. And since we're going to integrate over the angle, we're going to, go, we're going to integrate from 0 to pi over 2. From 0 to pi over 2. Since we're only doing the top half of the sphere, we need to double it. And so this is going to be equal to 2 times that, or 4 pi times the density times r times delta r times the integral of x cubed d theta from 0 to pi over 2. All right, so far, so good. Okay, now next thing we need to do is somehow turn x into a theta, or related to theta. So x is going to be this distance right here. This is your x going from there to there. That's the adjacent side to the angle. There's a hypotenuse. So we can say that x is equal to the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle theta. So that means that x cubed can be written as r cubed times cosine cubed of theta. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can say that i is equal to 4 pi rho r delta r times the integral of r cubed cosine cubed of theta d theta. So now at least we have the variables lined up and the r cubed can come outside the integral sign and make this an r to the fourth. So let's go ahead and write the integral like that over here. So we have i is equal to 
4 pi rho times r to the fourth times delta r times the integral of cosine cubed theta d theta from 0 to pi over 2 or 90 degrees. All right, we're getting closer. Now we need to integrate cosine cubed. Well, cosine cubed can be written as cosine squared times cosine. Let me do that over here. So we have cosine cubed is equal to, and let me just put an angle on there as well. A little sloppy here. Cosine cubed of theta is equal to cosine squared of theta times the cosine of theta. And the cosine squared, of course, would be 1 minus the sine square of theta. So this would be equal to 1 minus the sine square of theta times the cosine of theta, which means it's equal to the cosine of theta minus the sine square of theta times the cosine of theta. And notice that the cosine of theta is a differential of the sine square of theta, which will work out just fine. So now I can go ahead and substitute this for this, and let's integrate. So we have i is equal to 4 pi times the density times r to the 4 times delta r times the integral. Instead of this, we're going to replace that. So we have cosine of theta minus sine squared of theta times the cosine of theta, and the whole thing times d theta, and integrate from 0 to pi divided by 2. All right, so now let's go ahead and integrate that. Now notice that here we have sine squared of theta times the cosine of theta d theta. This is, u to, this is like x to the second power times dx, because this is your dx, so we are able to integrate this. And so the, co the integral of the cosine will be the sine, so this becomes i is equal to 4 pi times the density times r to the 4 times delta r times the integral of the cosine would be the sine of theta, and the integral of the sine squared times the cosine of theta d theta, since this here is the differential of this, this becomes minus the sine cube of theta divided by 3. And that will then be evaluated from 0 to pi divided by 2. All right? So when we go ahead and plug that in, we get this is equal to 4 pi times the density times r to the 4 times delta r times, when we plug in the lower limit, the sine of 0 is 0, the sine of 0 is 0, so only the upper limit counts, the sine of pi over 2, that would be 1, minus the sine of pi over 2 cubed, that would be 1 cubed, that's still 1 divided by 3, that would be 1 minus 1 over 3. All right, so now we can go ahead and simplify. Now we can also plug in what the density is equal to, because remember, the density, by definition, is equal to the mass divided by the volume, and that would be the mass divided by what would be the volume of a hollow sphere with a thickness delta r. It would be the surface area of the sphere times the thickness, so it would be 4 pi r squared, that's the surface area, times delta r, and we're going to substitute this for the density into our equation right there. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have i is equal to 4 pi, times the density, which is going to be the mass, divided by 4 pi r squared times delta r. We still have an r to the 4 times delta r in the numerator, and then we multiply that times 1 minus 1 third, which is 2 thirds. Okay, now we still have to simplify it. That's the fun part. The 4s cancel out, the pi's cancel out, the delta r's cancel out, and r squared and r to the 4, this becomes r squared, and this becomes 1. So this then becomes equal to 2 thirds m r squared, which is exactly the moment of inertia of a hollow sphere. And that's how we do that.